and hello again. This is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And today we are making a mess. Well, yes, we're making a mess, but we are also, this is the exciting part, we are laying track on the layout for, uh, for the first time here. This is a good opportunity to show the types of track that I use and some of the tricks that I use with working with it. And so in my case, I like to use tubular track, specifically 027 tubular track. Now the main differences between 027 and your regular O, in addition to the differences in track radii, which both are available in different track diameters, uh, but also the height of the rails, you see here the standard O is a little taller than your O27. Um, the uh, track pins are a little bigger diameter on the O versus the O27. Um, and, uh, you know, so the O is, it's, a, it's taller. The track ties are taller as well. So if I were starting fresh today, I would probably go with the O tubular, mainly because it's still in production, uh, still made by uh, Menards. I believe Williams also is still making O tubular track, whereas O27 hasn't been made in uh, about 20 years now. But O27 is still readily available. There's lots of it. It was made for uh, 80 some years. And uh, I've been collecting it in you know, my different uh, train sets and uh, different layouts for 50 plus years. So um, I've got lots of it. So for me, it is cheap and readily available. And for more information about the differences between O and O27 tubular tracks, you can uh, take a look at the video right up here. And uh, it goes more in depth about the differences between O and O27 tubular. Another reason that I like to use tubular track versus the modern molded plastic uh, roadbed type tracks, the real tracks or fast tracks and such, is that it's easy to modify the tubular track to different uh, track configurations. As you put the geometry together, you will find from time to time that you need to make a custom section. And it is much easier to, uh, to custom cut uh, these three rail sections than it is to modify all of the roadbed as well. It can be done, but I find it much easier to modify uh, the three rail track. So in this case, uh, I needed half of an 042 curve and also a partial straight. And yes, this is one of my painted sections. That's not rust, that's paint. So I've marked off the spots of my cut with some tape. So I have a, a good mark to deal with. And then as far as actually cutting the track, you can use whatever method, whatever tools you want for cutting metal, whether that be a good old hacksaw, a dremel, a chop saw, if you have one, or uh, you know, any, any method that you would like, as long as you can cut through the metal. In this case, I'm going to use a hacksaw because I want a very precise cut in a very specific location. Um, but sometimes they don't have to be quite as precise and, you know, something sloppier like a, uh, a Dremel or a hacksaw. Dremel, because with the body of the tool itself, it's hard to make a complete vertical cut. You end up uh, having to angle it somewhat because the body of the, the Dremel gets in the way. If you have uh, one of the extension cables um, with the thinner head, that works even better with the Dremel. So anyway, I'm going to cut these and uh, show you what I do next. So here I have my cut piece and <laughs> actually you can see the vibration from uh, uh, the saw actually uh, helped take some of the paint off and you can see the shiny rails underneath. When the sections are made at the factory, the end that accepts the pins is spread a little wider to accept the pins than you see here in the middle. Our hole is narrower. So I'm going to have to open this up a bit in order to accept track pins. So use a tool like an awl uh, or any pointed metal uh, object, a nail would work. I'm gonna push this into each of the holes and I can line it up here with my old eyes and push and twist. And you see that's making the uh, diameter of the hole here. If I can get it in focus, focus. It's making the diameter of the hole a little bigger and cleaning up any of the burrs left over from sawing in the process. There we go. And one more. 
And now, focus, there we go. And now uh, we are ready to accept track pins in this piece of the track. After my new pins are inserted, I use my favorite tool for working with uh, this tubular track. These are end nippers. And if you notice the way these pliers are designed with a hole in the middle, I can reach around the top of the rail and squeeze here and tighten up these connections. So I've put my new track pins in. I'm going to give them each a little squeeze to seat them in place, both for a better mechanical connection and also a better electrical connection. Yeah, give it a little squeeze, help seat it in place. And, uh, and so these are a really cool tool. I found this at Harbor Freight. It was like $4 or so, and it's a really invaluable tool for working with this tubular track. Okay, so again, I'm dealing with O27 track, and I'm using different manufacturers, different errors. I'm mixing Marks, Lionel, K-Line, uh, post-war, MPC, modern, and for the most part, these pieces of track are interchangeable. Marks track pins are a little bit longer and a little bit thicker than the Lionel and K-Line. They also lack the, uh, the little groove that is here. But uh, with a little encouragement, the Marks rail joiners will go into Lionel and K-Line track, and the smaller Lionel K-Line will go into Marks, although um, you'll want to crimp down the ends to make a snug connection. Speaking of which, my favorite track tool for that is if you have a loose connection, take these end crimpers, put it over the edge, and just crimp down and get that tight around the rail joiner. You'll also want to make sure as you're doing this, your rail joiners, you want to make sure that they're nice and shiny. If there's any corrosion or any rust, um, you know, hit it with uh, some sandpaper uh, and maybe some uh, electrical cleaner to make sure you get a good contact and no recurrence of the rust. You'll also want to think ahead about where you need to use insulated track pins. For example, the inside of any of the uh, remote automatic um, non-derailing turnouts, you'll want insulated pins on the inside rails for most of them. An exception would be the very first uh, 1954 versions of Lionel's 027 uh, turnouts here. Um, Lionel's come in black plastic, K-Lines come in white plastic, or you can make your own. I print mine on a 3D printer. Also in a pinch, uh, round wood toothpicks uh, I've successfully used uh, for insulated track sections. So you'll want those um, not only for your automatic switches, but also anywhere where you're going to separate the, uh, the track blocks. Think ahead electrically of where you might want to stop your trains and make sure that you put insulated track pins in the center. Do it at this point while you're doing your track planning and it will be easier later. You won't have to take up the track to put down those insulated pins. You will often find in making a layout that you will need to rearrange how the track pins are oriented. Um, so if you need to remove a track pin, some of them will come up pretty easy and I'll come use my rail nippers again and I'll grab on to the end and give it a pull. If it doesn't come out easily, like this one is being a little snug, then take a flat headed screwdriver on the back side slide it in and wiggle a little bit to widen your crimping a little bit and then give it a pull and it comes right out then to put it back in we put the rail joiner in and then again take our end nippers right around here and crimp it back together so again you have a nice tight connection like so if you get a rail where the ends are bent out of shape, um, take your metal awl and ream it out back to round and check it. And uh, that will help you put the rail joiners in and uh, reshape the rail into its proper contour. O27 rail joints are very forgiving, both in in and out and side to side. This is both a blessing in that 
it makes it so you don't have to be super precise in your track alignment, but also a curse in that if you're not careful, your geometry can get way out of whack and create some kinks that shouldn't be there otherwise. So always double check your track geometry and don't be afraid to cut sections to length for your particular application. For securing the track to the table, I use number four by three quarter inch wood screws. If I were using plywood as my base, I could probably get by by number four by half inch, uh, but since I'm using MDF board because it was cheap and available, I want something a little bit longer to give it a bite into that particle board um, foundation and just simply drill into the existing holes in the track ties. And so there it is, my methods for getting excellent results with 027 sectional track with Lionel, K-Line, Marks, doesn't matter the manufacturer, you can mix and match, uh, but using this 027 profile tubular track to make my layouts. And most of these tips can be used with standard O profile track as well. So if you're going the tubular route, I hope these uh, particular tips and tricks help you with your layout as well. Uh, next time, we are going to start wiring up the layout, get some trains running. So until next time, this is Mike signing off with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And until then, keep the trains running, or if you're building a layout, get those trains running soon. Catch you next time.